morning, everybody. I would first like to thank everyone for taking time out of the busy schedules to join us today. My name is Laura Kim, and I am a technology consultant for SNL International. Um, before I start, I would like to address a couple of housekeeping items. If everybody could please make sure you're all on mute, and there is a chat box for any questions that you would like to ask, please put them in there, and we'll be sure to address all of them at the end. So many of you on here probably know SNL, but for those who do not, we are a technology consulting firm. We are based in Arcadia, and we have been in business for over 24 years. At SNL, um, we want to ensure that our clients' data and critical business applications are not only secure, but also highly available. So we achieve this by taking a holistic approach to our business. Um, our three main areas of focus are, are your Microsoft and network infrastructure, backup and disaster recovery, and then also security solutions. I will say SNL, what sets us apart from other consulting firms, hands down is our engineering team. We have the best of the best. We have over 15 engineers. Not only are they all highly knowledgeable and skilled, but they are also certified in all of our solutions. So we are there to help with implementation, support and post implementation support as well. So again, I will say absolutely hands down, that's what sets us apart from everybody else is our engineering team. At SNL, our goal is to become a trusted partner with our clients. Um, we want to be there in the beginning stages of any project as we really are consultants and want to be there to help plan, build out and execute with our clients. We do not take a cookie cutter approach. Um, we do offer very customized solutions to tailor the specific needs of our clients as we know that no two environments are the same. Also too, our goal with our clients um, is to make sure we minimize costs while building efficiencies. And with every project, we achieve that through constant communication, both internally and with our clients. At SNL, we have the privilege to work with many different partners. And one of our strongest partners is Palo Alto Networks, who you'll be hearing from today. They will be talking about the SAS firewalls of service and SDN WAN. So in saying that, I want to switch it over to two great guys on that team over there, Tom Cochran. He is a regional account manager for Southern California and, it, and his engineer, Thomas Lee. So Tom Cochran, I'm going to hand it over to you now. Yeah, great. Thanks so much, Laura. Can, uh, can everyone hear me OK? Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, I certainly appreciate everyone joining today. My name is Tom Cochran. I work in parallel with Thomas Lee to support a portion of the LA region from a Palo Alto Networks perspective. Um, Thomas, Thomas and I have been working together for oh, what now, Thomas? Nine, ten years. So we're uh, we're par partners in crime. Keep keep me honest there, Thomas. Definitely ten years. Yeah. Um, can't get rid of me, man. Um, but but all joking aside, SNL is is one of our largest volume resellers here in SoCal. Um, I simply view them as as an extension of the Palo Alto Networks team. Uh, they have a a number of dedicated Palo resources. Um, mind, uh, folks, if you don't mind, mind muting. I uh, hear a little feedback. Yeah. Or maybe uh, Heidi or or Laura, if you don't mind muting all the participants. Um, but I would I would like to underscore one for Did we lose you, Tom? Well, it looks like it looks like Tom is muted. <laughs> Tom, you're muted. It looks like. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Trying to get you unmuted. Okay, 
looks like you might uh, you're still Tom, you're still muted. Jim, we can hear you. Yeah. <clears throat> But Tom, you can't unmute yourself, correct? Yeah, no. I, I'm, I unmuted it. It's on my shows that his unmuted. Here. Right here, I see the 949 number. I'm not sure why it's not unmuting. Am I unmuted? Are you able to unmute the nine four nine number? Yeah, it, it won't. It won't let. It won't let you mute or unmute. It. Tom, why, why don't you just dial I back? I can hear in. you, Laura. Mr. Lee, should we pinch it? Can you folks hear me now? There we go. Yes, awesome. can. So we're gonna do this the old uh, the old fashioned way and use some computer audio. There you go. So, um, well, since we've uh, since we've used a little time here on uh, on technical gremlins, let's let's dive in. So, folks, forgive me. Um, the focus of today's discussion is really centered around the secure access security edge space. It's a space many believe to to be the next frontier, and of course, networking and security. Um, Myself and, and, and Thomas Lee and the SNL folks certainly subscribe to that as well. So a little background on SASE. This is a, a relatively newer term. It was coined by Gartner roughly a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, now, if you if you sit down and you actually look at the Gartner report, um, which is fairly lengthy in nature, as a Gartner report always is, if you extrapolate kind of the salient points, um, what, what SASE really boils down to is Firstly, a, a cloud-delivered security platform, so a firewall as a service. And secondly, an, an SD-WAN technology. And under SASE, the, the two naturally must be married. So two pieces of the pie, if you will, security and networking. Um, I would contend that the space really stems from the pain points associated with more and more applications being hosted outside the data center. And of course, more and more of those, those applications being accessed via different devices. Um, what that in turn has done is it's, it's created slow applications for organizations and it's very much compromised security. So, and, and <laughs> quite frankly, last time I checked, both of those things greatly Im impact business operations. Um, what I will tell you is there are, are many vendors who are attempting to bring a SASE product to market. The vast majority are, are in fact, taking a Frankenstein based approach. So generally speaking, two OEMs forming an alliance. So your standalone secure web gateways, your standalone SD-WAN companies. Um, I'd venture to say when you have two UIs, you're, you're greatly hindering your time to value because the right hand's not talking to the left hand. Um, what, what is unique about Palo Alto Network's approach is, is that we offer a single integrated platform, both a firewall as a service and an SD-WAN technology. So let's, uh, let's double click into that. Um, what we'll address first and foremost is the security aspect of SASE. Um, Heidi, you want to go to the next slide? 
So it, it's it's certainly no secret that more and more folks are, are working remotely. Um, COVID's very much increased that. I'd, I'd argue we were already trending towards that direction. If anything, uh, I think COVID's accelerated that or served as a catalyst to, to kind of cement that. Um, and I'd, I'd also wager that it's not going away. So generally speaking, when Thomas, myself, Laura, Jim, when we talk to our customers, what they typically tell us is their VPN setup has some significant drawbacks, particularly when users are accessing things like SaaS-based applications. So things like Salesforce, Workday, uh, Office 365. Um, in, in general terms, most VPNs were not purpose-built for cloud-based applications or to support those cloud-based applications. So the question, it, it fundamentally and always becomes, as an organization, do I put more emphasis on, on security or more weight on speed and performance? And, and frankly, it, it can be really difficult for, for customers to obtain both via a, a conventional VPN. So with, with that said, I, I suppose let's, let's play out a, a few hypotheticals. So scenario one, a, a user logs onto the VPN. Uh, he or she connects, connects to a cloud application. And prior to egress, all that traffic sent back to the data center to be inspected by the class, kind of the classic cast, castle and moat or your security appliances. Um, of course, uh, that, that workflow very much, it, it favors security, but at the expense of speed and performance because your users are incurring, are incurring latency for backhauling. So Thomas and I, we were at, we were at a, an SD-WAN and a WAN optimization vendor prior to, prior to Palo Alto Networks for, for roughly eight years. And generally speaking, when a user incurs anywhere north of mm, 20, 25 milliseconds of latency, they're going to feel the pain. That's when you start to hear complaints, right? Like the old, the old adage of networks essentially guilty until proven innocent. Um, it's, a, it's unfortunately a concept that's as old as time. <laughs> As, as a result, what typically happens is that most users disconnect from the VPN, which kind of defeats the, the whole premise or purpose of a VPN. The, the, the premise of a VPN is, of course, to provide a secure tunnel for your users. Um, alternatively, we see a lot of customers employing split tunneling. Um, split tunneling, it's, it certainly has some, we'll call it distinct advantages, uh, but it very much favors speed and performance. But again, you're, you're sacrificing security here. So for instance, uh, only send the stuff that's coming back to the data center and have security around that. At, at that point, you're really relying on your, your EDR, your antivirus, your, your endpoint for security. So um, if my user's sitting at home and they have traffic going, going directly to the internet, we're gonna split tunnel that off from the source, which means we don't overrun our data center and infrastructure, but now my security team doesn't have visibility on, into all the traffic they'd like. So. For those are the those are the folks that are that are on the line today and have to adhere to things like HIPAA or PCI or CCPA or GDPR or you're striving for SOC, SOC two or a zero zero trust architecture. By not seeing that traffic, it very much creates a risk factor. So um, it stands to reason that IT directors they naturally have this IT directors CISOs network admins. Um, SOC engineers, the question ultimately becomes for all of those folks, is there a way to provide performance and security? Um, and next slide. Uh, oops. Looks like uh, I'm seeing a thank you slide. <laughs> yeah. A little, little overzealous. Yep. Happens, to the, happens to the best of us. Thanks. Thanks, Heidi. Um, so the answer is, is of course, yes, um, you, you, you can have your cake and, and eat it too. This is really where Prisma Access comes in. So Prisma Access is a, a top to bottom firewall that resides in the cloud. And with Prisma Access, you have the ability to, to leverage our complete security stack. So same OS, complete one-to-one -one feature, feature parity is our hardware form factor. Um, it has all the firewall features that folks are familiar with, things like SSL decryption, TLS decryption, malware sandboxing via, uh, excuse me, via wildfire, DLP, DNS. What's different is, is the consumption model and the form factor. What's, what's really nice about Prism Access is it eliminates the, the performance issues associated with a conventional VPN, the ones we, we spoke about, right? Like essentially backhauling and hairpinning and the whole tromboning effect and latency and all that, all that pain. <laughs> um, as I sit here today and I speak with you through headphones, thanks to all my uh, my technical gremlins, forgive me. 
But as I sit here today, I am considered by Palo Alto Networks a mobile worker. Um, the moment I VPN in, my traffic sent to a gateway or a node in the cloud, and thereafter that internet traffic or that traffic rather it gets scrubbed, it gets inspected. Um, the only traffic going back to the data center and back, back slide, back two slides, sorry. Um, thank you. Um, the only traffic going back to the data center is if something is in fact destined for the data center. So for instance, if your user is actually trying to access an application hosted in the DC, um, well, of course, they're, they're going to be, they're going to go back to the data center. Um, the beauty is, is that security policy, it follows me regardless of where I am in the world. And of course, since all the traffic's being pointed to a firewall residing in a regional pop, like I said, there's no hairpinning, there's no backhauling. Um, you're not going back to the data center for security purposes. So thus, as a mobile user, I don't have to jump on and off my VPN to essentially act obtain better speed for my applications, things like Salesforce, again, Workday, SuccessFactors, et cetera. Um, last component that I will, or last facet that I will touch on before I, I hand the baton to Thomas, um, we manage the OS. There's no racking, there's no stacking. You simply focus on, on rule creation, which is really nice. So I know I, I emphasized or I really emphasized a, a, the VPN use case or the mobile user use case, but there is another flavor of Prisma Access where we actually have the ability to address consolidation for customers. Those who are looking to go thin at their branch, um, potentially looking to reduce their, their footprint at branch sites, remote sites, et cetera. Um, so Thomas, any commentary on either the VPN use case or um, if, you can, if you could potentially expand on, on the... Um, the branch office of the remote network excuse case that would be that would be great yeah i mean like you said all the benefits that you just described early top in terms of the mobile use case right um you know from a scalability perspective that's massive right um you can deploy these things when i say deploy obviously these mobile users will require a client uh, on these devices but the nice part is is that you can actually ramp these things up extremely fast right uh we not not only from a deployment perspective but we can onboard literally thousands uh, of of uh, end users pretty much at the uh, uh, at the fingertip, right? So all the infrastructure is already built out, right? That's extremely important uh, to, to know. But uh, so that's the most of mobile user side of the house. But if you talk about the remote side, now the nice thing about this solution is it's not it's not very um, from a deployment perspective and onboarding. A, a remote uh, location is really totally straightforward. If you have any device that is capable of nailing up an IPsec tunnel directly into Prisma Access, voila, you're pretty much done, right? So thinning down the branch is extremely easy. You can literally, uh, and we'll show you, we'll show you in a bit at how we can actually drive and remove, uh, um, you know, devices, even including the remote edge firewall, and actually. Have a device that it is on that network. It's capable of nailing, nailing up an IPsec tunnel, and all traffic can actually force directly into Prisma Access, right? Uh, so from a uh, from a cost you know, savings perspective, all the way to actually centrally manage all the policy, it, it's extremely easy. Yeah, Thomas. Thomas mentioned one thing um, that's worth double clicking into. So what's really nice is the scale associated with Prisma Access. So. Thomas and I were, were having a conversation with an IT director, oh, maybe three, four weeks ago. And uh, this it just so happens this, this customer is a, a current Palo Alto Networks firewall shop. And she was thinking about adding 10, 10 firewalls, 10 850s to, to their branch locations, which for those of you who are not Palo Alto Networks customers, those are small, medium, medium-sized firewalls. And her biggest concern though is, is in three years, because bandwidth is so inexpensive, what if she needs to go from 500 megs to a gig, right? So the trajectory they're on, and I'm sure this is not, not all that different than some of the folks on, on the line today, they went from bonded T1s three years ago. So this is a small site, bonded T1s to a DS3 or 45 megs. They've gone to 100 megs. Now they've gone to a gig. Well, what if in, in what she conveyed to us is, is in two, three, four years, what if they want to go to two gigs? Or what if they go to three, four gigs, right? Like, the SIs and the SPs are basically given, given bandwidth away. Um, well, now the bottleneck in her network is her firewall. Um, or what if she scales out from a personnel perspective in two years? Or what if she wants to do SSL decryption on that box? So 
she, she, her, and her view is she's, she's now beholden to a fixed and finite throughput associated with that hardware. So ultimately, rather than purchasing those, those 10 boxes, she went with Prisma Access. And re reason being is it's simply put, it's, it's elasticity, right? Um, so you're, you're, you're adding throughput. Each time you need to scale up, you're adding throughput come renewal time. So her organization, she's, she's achieved many things for the organization, but now she can scale dynamically and she can scale on the fly. And she has the speed to support 100% of, of her mobile workforce. Um, but so, so I'm just going to add on to that because yeah, uh, yeah. I was also on that call, right? So at the end of the day, you know that we're also facing a supply chain issue, right? Deploying that, you know, 12 sites, of course, you're going to have to now procure the hardware. What's the simplest way? We got a device on those locations. We basically spun up the Prisma access tenant. We nail up a an IP set tenant directly into it and voila, we're up. So we actually, actually help the customers out dramatically here, right? So, uh, so next slide. Thanks so much, Heidi. I appreciate it. So Prisma Access, it, it absolutely provides security. Um, however, the security aspect is really only one piece of the SASE puzzle. The other component is, is SD-WAN. Um, what's interesting is over the last five, six years, the market conditions have really created a fertile ground for SD-WAN. We just, as evidenced in, in the anecdote we just, we just talked about, or just spoke about rather, um, mostly again, because MPLS is, is very costly and you can now get a DIA or a broadband or a 4G, 3G, LTE, heck 5G for pennies on the dollar. Um, another real driver behind SD-WAN is of course automation. Um, the, the everyday mundane tasks associated with managing a network. Um, building building a, a, mesh, a mesh manually, trying to manage that at scale, especially if you have a lot of IPsec tunnels, particularly from, from multiple circuits, um, it's, it's not a trivial task. Intra-office communication for things like VoIP, it's difficult. Um, heck, maybe that costs you another CCIE, right? Uh, again, like last time I checked, routing updates and, and, and tables um, on, most, on most networks is not exactly an easy task. So that, that said, when it, when it, as it pertains to, to SD-WAN, the reality is, is uh, like I said, Thomas and I were at, were at a, a, an SD-WAN vendor prior to Palo Alto Networks for a number of years. And the reality is, is IPsec tunnels, quality of service, policy-based routing, they're not anything new. Um, with SD-WAN, however, you're, you're really bundling those existing technologies into a UI so you can have things like connectivity, orchestration, automation, so you can get, get out of the command line interface, right? That's, that's the real goal. Um, so 20 months ago, Palo Alto Networks decided to acquire CloudGenix SD-WAN. And um, like I said, the, the early days of, of SD-WAN, if, if I could shed a little light on that, um, when, when Thomas and I were at this, this previous vendor, um, you're, it was always this, this kind of intrinsic challenge of where do we put this SD-WAN device, right? It was, do we, do we go north or south of the firewall? Um, and your, your Velo clouds, Vitella, Silver Peaks, Meraki even to a certain degree with some SD-LAN functionality. Um, what I will tell you about, about the vast majority of those first gen SD-WAN devices is they're primarily layer three. They're governing traffic based on a few, few basic net, network metrics, jitter, latency, some do MOS score. Um, what I will tell you is the space has really evolved. Um, it's, it's one thing of course, to be application aware, but most of the folks we talk to, they, they want, they want their network policies and rules to be defined by specific applications. Um, so latency, jitter, packet loss, in our eyes, those are table stakes requirements. Um, what really sticks out to me about Prisma SD-WAN, formerly CloudGenix, is, is just the richness of network metrics and reporting capabilities. So yes, we use latency, we use jitter, we use packet loss. All of those sort of legacy metrics are gonna be used to determine which path your app should be taking. But we also take it a step further. We use app response time, top talkers, round, round trip times. All of that information, all of those metrics and data points are being used to deliver the best possible experience for your user. So you can get rid of things like your WAN optimization device. You can uh, standardize with, with internet or 4G or LTE or D DIA, right? So most folks prior to SD-WAN, they didn't want to fully standardize with internet because you can't apply QoS markings. You can't enforce SLAs on the greater internet. Well, this enables you to do so at a fraction of the cost. It's really about, it's a cost savings play. Um, 
So I, um, Thomas, I'll pause, or excuse me, folks, I'll pause there for a moment. My, my wife says I, uh, I love the sound of my own voice. So I'll put a muzzle on myself. And uh, Thomas, any commentary on Cloudgenics? And maybe, um, obviously, folks, this can, be, this can be consumed as a standalone entity. We, Thomas and I have many customers who utilize uh, Prisma SD-WAN as, as the, their primary de facto SD-WAN vendor. And then we have other customers who have standardized with a true full SASE model where they leverage Prisma, Prisma Access as well as Prisma SD-WAN and use Cloudgenix for that IPsec tun tunnel to connect into the backbone or fabric of uh, the firewall as a service. Um, Thomas, any any commentary or anything that I uh, incidentally or in omitted? No, I wouldn't say you omitted anything here, but all the stuff that you talk about, it's extremely relevant here, right? So you, you point out really clearly uh, that these solutions, oh, the, the platform that we're talking about can also be coupled, right? At the end of the day, you can definitely deploy the SDON fabric, right, coupled with Prisma Access, so you're getting the best of the both world, right? You're getting an, uh, an SD-WAN fabric that allows you to route internal traffic privately through your SD-WAN. Then, of course, from a security perspective, you can push all that traffic directly into Prisma Access for security, right? Just to ensure that, making sure that traffic traversing the internet, uh, going out through the internet, is completely, uh, you know, you have complete visibility into there. And then, of course, you're going to apply all the security that we talked about uh, onto that flow, right? And, and that's you know, the best of both worlds, right? From a deployment perspective, this is massive, right? You can actually drop these devices in onto these remote locations and it will build, orchestrate, and all the tunnels, you know, directly into Prisma access. And now, as a, a as a, as a administrator, uh, administrator uh, to the, uh, to the security piece, also to the networking piece, you have the ability to now really focus on two things, right? Before, either you're going to do, you know, application, right? Focus on application or security. Now you can actually do both. You can now be able to basically select the applications that you want to make sure that you have the best uh, available bandwidth for that and making sure the security will follow not only the, the user, but the application piece, right? That is massive. You know, from a, you know, from a uh, you know, from a security posture perspective. Yeah, the other thing that I will say is um, those metrics that I spoke about earlier, things like MOS score, app response time. Naturally, we're using we're using those to ensure performance. But the real beauty is is we're actually we're actually using those to to automate network functions, things like failover. Um, that's a big component. That's a big component uh, for SD WAN, BCDR, right? Business continuity, disaster recovery. So. Thomas and I, we actually have a customer that's in, in retail. They're a classic brick and mortar. Um, they have a single provider for all their locations. Don't ask me why. <laughs> um, something happened that took that provider down. So the IT director, he calls, he calls every GM at every store. And so he's ringing each one. He says, hey, um, heads up, the internet's down. Um, it's, or it's going to be down. And it, well, one store, it just so happened that we, Thomas and I, were conducting a POC with Prisma SD-WAN. The IT, the IT director calls this GM. He gets him on the phone. And he says, hey, your, your internet's down. And the GM's response is, I don't know what you're talking about. We're fine. And everyone's kind of scratching their head, right? And so what, what happened at that particular site was when the primary circuit became unhealthy, started having issues, it intuitively failed to LTE to, LT to a cradle point. And it did that based on our metrics. So every other side in their network went down. The company lost thousands of dollars, thousands. Um, but at that one site where there was a POC, where there was a, a Prisma SD-WAN box, they had absolutely no disruption of service. So the failover happened automatically. And as it became healthy, here's the kicker, as it became healthy, it defaulted back to the preferred, preferred path, AKA bandwidth. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm getting all excited here. Uh, Thomas and I we're we're uh, we're kind of self-admitted nerds, probably why we've been working together for so long. But this thing's really slick, um, and uh, we're we're jazzed about it, as you can see. Um, next next slide. So last last thing I will say about this, and, and perhaps the the greatest. Uh, feature, if you will, of, of the solution is that you're now you're marrying your network and your security function. So you're very much 
you're very much simplifying your stack by managing it with one click integration. So the nice benefit of, of the single point of management is by using the SD-WAN technology and of course integrating your firewalls, you can selectively on a per app per user basis decide which apps are gonna be inspected. So even from one branch to another, um, you can have it inspected. So um, I, I suppose in some just benefits as a whole, right? Being able to manage a mesh, mesh network manage your tunnels more effectively, you've simplified your stack, you potentially ridded yourself of your uh, hardware branch, uh, or excuse me, a hardware firewall at your branch. Um, if you need local segmentation, there's some different, there's some different caveats that we can address in a one-on-one in -on -one call, um, but you have limitless scale at your branch. You could potentially get rid of your, your router and replace it with an SD-WAN appliance. Um, and since your firewall resides in the cloud, you don't have to, you don't have to have you don't have to have someone spend time racking, cabling, IP, right? We, we spoke about that a little bit. Um, again, you focus on, on policy creation. So again, I don't want to belabor any points. Um, I'll pause for a moment. Thomas, any final commentary on SASE as a whole? Oh, overall, it's a great solution, right? So we definitely see the trend, unlike Tom was saying early in the beginning, is just that you know, this this is coming, right? Uh, and not only that, it's happening quite a bit, right? Our customer base, you know, traditional customers that have, you know, firewall on uh, on uh, on premise, uh, uh, whether it be on the data center, HQ, or remote branch, they're actually coming to this you know, conclusion, right? This this solution, this technology that we presented here today, actually saves a lot of time, right? A lot of money. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of uh, of TCO, but more importantly, is actually it gives them the ability to centrally manage all the security policies, right? And then, to, to, you know, be able to consolidate that piece of it. More importantly, is is that that end user it doesn't matter where they are, it will be, uh, you know, at a remote branch to a, a mobile users. You know, that, that security is plugged directly into Prisma Access, and centrally, that end user gets managed by. Course bit, right? That's massive, right? So you get an overall consolidation piece here, right? It's great technology, right? We've seen a lot of folks are actually moving toward this, uh, the 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 solution. Excellent. Well, without uh, without further ado, I believe uh, Laura, you wanted to touch on one one more piece, so uh, I'll I'll hand the baton to you. Yeah. Thank you, guys, so much. So what we would like to talk about now is a BPA. It's a best practice assessment. This is something that um, SNL and Palo Alto would like to offer everybody on this call. It's a free assessment. The goal of the BPA is to compare your current policy configurations against best practices, and it produces a curated set of recommendations on how you can improve your security posture. Um, it would also create a roadmap of critical policy configurations They'll be created and the progress of your implementation will be measured to ensure you're moving in the right direction. Um, Palo Alto also with this will provide recommendations and best practices and tools to leverage to improve your prevention capabilities. Um, so it's kind of like in a nutshell. So all in all, the BPA is a, it's just a way to better protect your environment by adopting Palo Alto's best practices across your entire architecture. Um, so we, SNL and, and Palo Alto as a team, we want to ensure that you're leveraging all of the features and benefits of your Palo Alto firewalls, just to ensure that that will then result in a higher ROI for your organization. Um, so yeah, that's Laura, what the Laura. oh, go ahead. Sorry, yes. No, I was going to say great, that's that's a great summation of a best practice assessment. Just to, to expand on that a little bit more, when a lot of when a, when a lot of our, our customers, and, and admittedly, this is no fault of their own, they they cut over on a Sunday night and and they walk away, right? Like. It, many of us are guilty of this. Um, they'll use Expedition and they may or may not migrate some rules over from their staple firewall. That could be a sonic wall, checkpoint, watch guard, ASA, um, so on. So I think from this is a really unique opportunity. SNL is offering this as a, a complimentary exercise. Um, I would urge or I would implore everyone on the call to, to, to take them up on this. But essentially their, their goal is to help help you use your Palo firewall as a true layer seven firewall, right? So the BPA really serves as an exercise for them to collectively analyze your security policies. Um, so in essence, are you leveraging all those advanced fe features where, where it makes sense? Um, for instance, in each zone, what, what are you blocking? 
Um, how well are you using content filtering? Are you taking advantage of things like user ID, app ID? Are you integrated with your, your AD so you can go slap someone on the wrist if they're using up uh, a, ton of, uh, a ton of bandwidth downloading a BitTorrent? Um, those, are, those are merely examples, but what, what it boils down to is, again, ensuring that your posture is, is as rock solid as possible. And um, again, I think it's a great opportunity, so I would I would absolutely encourage it. Yeah, and so on that too, we also want to note that if you don't have Palo Alto in your environment, we can still offer a different assessment for your for your particular environment. And again, the goal with both the BPA and you know the other security assessment we have is just to improve your overall security performance and posture. So, and you can directly contact myself or anybody else on this call to get more information on that as well. So after that, unless Thomas and Thomas have anything to say, I was going to open it up to the questions that we had in the chat. I don't know if you guys have anything else you wanted to say quickly. No, I think that's that's great. Okay. Um, why don't we field some questions? I'll scroll okay. up in the chat. So it looks like um, one of the questions is, is asking about the link for the Grubhub. Yes, everyone on this call is going to get a, a link that will be sent out after the call and an email for that link. So you guys will get that definitely. Um, it looks like another call from Alexander is how do you place running SD SD WAN on the Palo Alto firewall and manage via panorama panorama or is Palo Alto moving 100% to Prisma? So that, that yeah. question's already being addressed by Jim, but uh, that's exactly what Jim says. You know, panorama is going to be your friend. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't see that. I can I yeah. can uh, I I can uh, uh, I can we can kind of go into that a little bit deeper because it's a little it's a little confusing because um, Prisma really covers a couple of different things, um, cloud security and cloud access. And I think that's kind of what the nature of your, your question is. So um, if you're an existing um, PA shop, so you've got that, that great perimeter um, access and you wanna do SD-WAN, no problem. It's an SD-WAN license, you apply it to your PAs, you're good to go. Um, but if you're a hybrid, um, um, implementation, and we find that that's most customers, right? A, a lot of our clients still have a lot of their proprietary um, uh, CRM apps; those are in-house, um, and then they they have some some cloud presence, um, usually Microsoft 365 or others. Um, you can you can have a a hybrid approach where you're doing Prisma, um, SaaS, and cloud in conjunction with your existing uh, PA appliances. And the nice thing about that is because everything is managed through Panorama, what you do for your policy in the cloud is automatically pushed down to your appliances on the perimeter. So it's a very seamless uh, management process all through Panorama that's simply an extension of what you're doing today. Right. So I don't know if that answered your question. I kind of got the impression that that's where you're going with that. Um, so if you want to give a thumbs up or hopefully that answered that uh, and what you were thinking. Thank you, Jim. Um, so those are the only questions I saw, but um, please, anybody else have any questions they want to ask? Okay, so. All right, well then I guess- This is Sean. Uh, I have, oh, sorry, go I ahead. I have one quick question. Maybe, maybe Thomas and Tom could speak to the speed of deployment, because I know one of the major concerns with these kind of solutions is always deployment and speed of deployment in environments and impacting end users and you know with all the work from home systems and stuff like that. Maybe you can quickly address that. Yeah. What is required? What is the footprint on the endpoints and stuff like that? Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll address that. So from a deployment pers you know, perspective, Sean, it's relatively straightforward. What I mean by that is, is that there is a cl cloud portion of it, which is the uh, the Prisma uh, access piece of it. It's a tenant that we spun up, right? That's, you know, that doesn't, there's no, really no impact uh, uh, on the customer side of the house, right? The secondary piece that we, we're talking about mobile, uh, uh, you know, perspective, there's there will be a a, a um, piece of software called Global Client, uh, the Global Protect Agent that actually resides and gets pushed out 
um, either you, you can do it uh, if you have any type of, uh, of um, software deployment uh, uh, out there that you can push it out really it's relatively easy it's just a small msi package once you deploy that uh, to the mobile devices um, it's basically you just basically uh, connect up and you're way to go now to get access to your remote networks um, that's relatively straightforward in terms of either uh, if you go with the cloud genx solution you would just basically drop a an ion device at those remote branch or you can you know if you don't have uh, um, an ion uh, or you know basically if you don't want to go with an ion uh, solution you can have an um, any device in those remote locations can nail up an ip sec tunnel and pretty much up and functional so you can layer these things in um, relatively easy and the impact on the user side of the house is if anything a remote reboot of a laptop that's about it um, so we can uh, rapidly onboard a customer onto prism access extremely fast it's really up to the customer perfect thank you there looks like there's another question that had to come in did we cover off on digital experience management it's a very useful component of work from home yeah, That's so a I can great, feel. Yeah, go ahead. You want to take that, Tom? Yeah, I'll take a stab at it, and then Thomas, why don't you, uh, why don't you correct me? You're the brains of this operation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have a feature on on Prism Access referred to as autonomous digital experience management. So uh, this really stems from when we solicit feedback from our customers. What they typically tell us is they hear about issues after the fact. Generally speaking, mostly mostly network folks. Um, right, a reactive approach. Most folks are, are are trying to prove, they're constantly trying to prove whether it's a network issue, a server issue, an app issue. Um, they may have something like SolarWinds, an SNMP device, which is, um, which is, it's nice, it's needed, um, but it merely tells you if something's up or down, right? It's a polling device. So it's reactive in nature. Um, then you've got your WhatsApp gold of the world, you've got your Dynatrace, your app dynamics, which is kind of going into the APM space. But we, we sit in a very advantageous position. We have a, a very advantageous position within the network in that we have an agent on your device so we can perform that function. So for instance, if a user's laptop's slow because of say poor Wi-Fi, um, is it broadband it, WAN connectivity? Is it the middle mile from the ISP? Um, this, this feature is very nice because it illuminates this in real time. We have the ability to, um, to determine is your SaaS provider slow? Great. Well, now we can actually take that back. They have an SLA. We could take that back and say, hey, Salesforce, here's the data points. Help, help me understand why, why this application is slow and you're not meeting SLAs, right? So you can hold their feet to the fire. Um, it's really about, this feature is really about mean time to innocence, mean time to resolution and mitigating that. Thomas, anything you'd add there? No, it's a it's great. Uh, it's a great overview there. So, you know, just think about it this way, right? If you have the endpoint device, which is, you know, a mobile device, and then you have the application and in between the endpoint and the application, you, know, you got a lot of components there, right? you got what Tom was saying is you got the, you know, the device itself, which is the laptop. You've got the networking piece of the Wi-Fi. you got the actual VPN connections, you've got the firewall, you've got so many components that sit between the end user and the application, right? Should something would go wrong, how do you really want to get to uh, uh, that problem quickly, right? So with, the, uh, with uh, this solution here, uh, it's pretty awesome, right? It's that you can, because we monitor end-to-end -end transactions, right? Not only when we monitor the local device, all the way to the networking level and also in, including into the application right? so, so that the, there is essentially a probe that goes all the way through at any point in time in terms of those services that were to be interrupted we know exactly where the problem is so instead of doing a guessing game where an end user calls up hey i can't um my laptop's not working or i can't get to my application or oh, try to troubleshoot that thing it's really difficult right especially that end user is really remote and you have you know nowadays it's extremely hard to get access to the uh the end uh, the, the mobile device so with this solution you can pull pull that up at a dash you know pretty much uh, uh, on a screen you can tell pretty much by the time they call you identify the users 
and you find the users, you can tell, hey, wait a minute, that user is really having a Wi-Fi issue, not a networking issue, not an application issue, or for that matter, if some user truly there's an application problem, we see that. So what it comes down to is that we can surface the issue to you quickly, and you can actually not waste time in trying to find out where the problem is, because the problem will be staring at you. Does that make sense? Yeah, Thomas, I think that was a great overview. Yeah. It was, thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions. Does anybody else have anything, anything they want to ask? OK, so thank you everybody for attending today. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Thomas and Thomas, for always being awesome with your presentation. You guys can always reach out to myself and with any questions that you might have um, from, you know, any follow up questions. And I think that's it. Everyone, thank you again and have a great day. Thanks, folks. Thank Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.